So about a month ago, after a, an animated discussion about filming and so on and so forth, Uncle Kathy takes his GoPro, throws it at me and says, here, go film yourself. That's how I've been doing that. I've, I've been trying, you know, working on my skills, I'm raising my levels a little bit, right? All right. So as it turns out, I'm really not as good at it as I could be. She cleans a lot of this stuff up in editing. But um, more and more, she's like, let me just film this. Forget it. Let me just film this. You don't have to film yourself anymore. I'll film it for you. I'm like, no, no, no. I can master this. I can I can do this. She said, like, we're doing this 3D3. And um, she says, we're, we're going to do, the, do the heads. We're going to put the heads on it and talk about head gaskets. So she says, let me film this thing. And, and, and the viewers are starting to wonder where I am, like why I'm not filming stuff. I said, just relax. We use you for the important things. And I'll just do this by myself. So she says, all right, fine. So I come here the other day and I'm like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna film this, we're gonna film step by step this whole bit. We're gonna put the heads on this thing and we're gonna talk them down and, and, and talk about head gaskets and all that. So I do that, right? I set it all up and I do this really good video. This was a great video, I gotta tell you, right? So every step, every step, we talk about the head gaskets, types of head gaskets, wiping down the deck, putting head on, head bolts, prepping the head bolts, torquing them in order. I even pulled my, my first, the first trick I ever learned about Mopar engines, like Mopar, you know, made me a Mopar guy when I was like 16, was like using a coat hanger or, or a, a welding rod, right, a straight rod, and lay them up against the rocker pedestals on these big blocks to lay the push rods in place so that everything lines up when you drop the rockers on. When Chrysler designed these, Unlike most engines, there's no there's no provision to hold the push rod kind of in place, like there's no hole or anything, they just flop. So you need like five hands when you're putting this together, you know, to keep all of the, the push rods in order while the rockers are lined up and you're bringing the bolts down. So that we, I pulled that trick out of me and then I showed, you know, do that. Okay, so I'm like, ah, oh, this is a great video. People are gonna love this video, right? So after I finish it up, I watch it, okay, and it's black. I look like a demon from a coal mine. Okay, there's like there's like no light, right? I'm like, oh god, this is terrible. All right, what am I gonna do? Okay, all right. I still have the other head to do, so I'll just reshoot the whole video. I'll get good lighting. I'll reshoot the whole other video, and and we'll be good to go. So I do that, right? I get every light that I can find, and I, I stick it on myself, right? So I look like a, like like a space alien with all little lights reflecting off my glasses so I go through this whole video again soup to nuts right and I'm like now I'm all proud of it oh look I put, I put the valve cover on the there so I'm all proud of this and I run it over to Kathy and she looks at it and she says this is not usable I said what's the matter with this one she says you're angry I just well, you know maybe a little bit she says yeah you're really angry people don't want to watch an angry uncle tony they want to see you do your thing they don't you know they want to see happy tony right they don't want to see sorry all right yeah and it really it was wasn't usable i really was angry right so uh so i says fine she says let me just shoot this thing i says give me one more shot give me one more chance and and i'm gonna see i'm, I'm gonna pull this off so I says, I'm not gonna take this freaking motor apart again to redo all of that. So just just picture me like torquing head bolts and I, okay, right? But I <laughs> fast forward through all that and uh, we'll get to the meat of what that video was about. And, and we were talking about head gaskets. The head gasket types, myths, history, right? And uh, I thought that was pretty good. So that's what I'm gonna cover all this time around and I'm gonna do it right. Uncle Kathy is gonna be proud of me. So, um, head gaskets. So the first thing I want to talk about, because there's a myth that's like the most enduring myth in all of internal combustion engines. And it goes back to the earliest types of head gaskets that were used. And then we're talking about flathead engines. So we're talking about engines that were built from the middle of the early 1950s and back. And it has to do with retorquing head gaskets. And I can't tell you how many guys I've seen put an engine together and they'll go through this whole procedure where they'll start it, they'll run it, they'll let it run 15, 20 minutes, let it get hot, and then they shut it off and they take the valve covers off. Sometimes they gotta take, they gotta take the plugs out of it, sometimes they gotta take the exhaust off, the headers, whatever it is, right, to get it all in the head bolts. And they'll, they'll retorque 
all of the head bolts. It can burn, you can burn down half a day doing this. It's a completely unnecessary step using any of the modern style head gaskets out there. And by modern, I mean anything, anything factory equipped from the 19, from like 1960 forward, right? So here's the thing with this. You ever see the episode of Green Acres where Lisa makes hot cakes, right? And however uses one of them, the thing of, of hot cakes for a head gasket on his tractor. And it, it's not too far from the truth. In the flathead days, head gaskets were made out of, it was a composite copper and asbestos material. Super soft, right? And those engines back then, this, the head bolts, they didn't receive a lot of torque. They were 45, 50, 50, 55 pounds. So what'll happen is you put one of those engines together, you put the heads down on it, and then you run the motor, the head gasket settles, and you go back and you retorque. And that was the common procedure. That was across the board when you're dealing with those flathead engines and those asbestos and copper head gaskets. But when the manufacturers went to overhead valve engines, middle 1950s on to today, they did away with that because it, it's not a practical thing to retorque head gaskets, especially you, you, can't, you can't have this thing come off the assembly line, the motor gets run for 15, 20 minutes and then everything has to come apart, you know, have to, have to, everything under the hood's gotta come apart so you can retorque the head gaskets. That won't work. So beginning when they went to the overhead valve engines, they started using this, which is a simple steel shim head gasket. They're lightly embossed, so, so that each of the passages has a little bit of a, of a, of a ripple to it or a little bit of a, of a metal seal to it. And then they would coat these with either a gasket shellac, which is something that you would just brush on the gasket, or copper coat. Copper coat just comes in a spray can and you just you, you spray it down. And both of those things act as to, to fill in the slight imperfections in, in surfaces and keep the gasket from wanting to move around. Because here's one of the things you got to understand about head gaskets and why they're so prone to failure. Well, there's a lot of reasons that they're prone to failure, but the head gasket has a unique job in that it has to seal so many different areas. You've got the combustion pressures that are trying to push out on this. You've got the water passages. You've got the oil passages. And you've got two different castings that are moving around at different, at different paces. So like for instance, the block expands and contracts with heat. The block is one big casting. The cylinder head is a completely different type of casting, different size and everything, and it expands and contracts at a different rate. And the head gasket has to keep all of those things in, in it has to take all of that into consideration. And on top of that, every time, see it's, it's an imperceptible amount, okay? It's, it's almost microscopic. But every time a combustion event happens in a cylinder, the head is lifted slightly. Like I said, it may only, it's a microscopic amount, but over the course of hundreds of millions of cycles, as an engine is running, it starts to take a toll. Things become fatigued, and the likelihood of blowing a head gasket, between, especially between the cylinders, becomes greater and greater. So these gaskets were good. But the problem with these gaskets is that as an engine ages and things warp a little bit, they're not forgiving. They, uh, they'll, they'll start to leak. The gasket itself won't necessarily fail, but what will happen is they'll start to see gases, you'll start to see adjacent cylinders sharing combustion gases. So with that, they went to this next style middle 1960s into the 70s. They went to this style, which is a composite gasket, but instead of it just being, instead of a composite like the old, you know, asbestos and copper gaskets, these have a fire ring, right? So in, instead of like on the, on the shim gasket where it's just, it's just the material, these have the stainless part, the center part of it, crimped over to create a fire ring and then to take up the gap they fill it with this material which acts as a sealer 
So once you went to this, this type of composite gasket, there was no more real crush like you had with the earlier gaskets, and you didn't have to add any type of sealer to make them work. This material right here was all the sealer you needed. And no retorque on these, no added sealer, no retorque. If you're using the type of gasket that originally came on an overhead valve type of engine, the retorquing part is obsolete. Do it once and forget it, send it. So this type of gasket works fantastic in 95% of the situations. But beginning in the 1980s, 1990s, the manufacturers started to change the basic construction of the engines. Instead of them being primarily iron block, iron head, they then went to iron block, aluminum head. And the center material, the metal on this is stainless. So here's what would happen. When everything is new and fresh, man, the antifreeze is fresh, everything is all good to go. Functions fine, the system functions fine. But as antifreeze ages, it becomes acidic. And the acid reacts with the three dissimilar metals, the iron block, the aluminum head, and the stainless steel in the head gasket. And what happens is it starts to etch away at the stainless and the, comp the composite material, the sealing material around it. And so in the late 1980s and all through the 90s, you had this crazy rash of head gasket failures. Head gasket, it was just, it was just a common thing. To this day, you could still buy cars for pennies on a dollar, really. Uh, Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, whatever, they need head gaskets. And it's because of that neglect of not changing the antifreeze, not allowing it to become acidic and start the etching process. So what the manufacturers did at that point is they went to the next step. And they started using MLS gaskets, multi-layer steel. So with those things now is you've got, they're, they're a steel sandwich. There's no soft material in there. And the multi-layers of steel act as a spring, right? So what that does is it helps compensate for the movements of the block in the head, the dissimilar expansion and contraction rates of the block in the head. And because there's no soft material to leak as the stainless might begin to get etched out as the antifreeze ages, it was the fix. And later on, as you went to boost and nitrous and all sorts of crazy combustion pressures and temperatures came into play, those MLS gaskets, that was the next step. So even if you're building, even if you're building an older conventional engine that would normally have this type of composite gasket, which is gonna seal beautifully under most circumstances, once you get into a higher uh, stressed situation, an MLS type of gasket is the way to go. Now, you talk about higher stress. Here's some, here's some trivia, right? The big block Chrysler and the Chevy V8s have something in common that from the very earliest days gave them a performance advantage in extreme applications. In other words, like uh, supercharging or uh, extremely high compression, high stress applications. And that's the fact that they have five bolts around each cylinder. So here are, your, here are your bowl holes, right? So one, two, three, four, and five, right? As opposed to most engines that have four. So you'll have, you'll have two here and two here, four around each cylinder. So when they went to this five setup, these two bottom, these two bottom bolts got moved closer to each other. And this area right here that was vulnerable to getting blown out is sealed better. And the same thing is up in the valley. By adding this bolt over here, there's less chance of compression blowout into the valley. You also move this bolt here closer to the center. So that helps to reinforce this, this area between the cylinders. And that's one of the reasons, it's one of the main reasons why the Chevy and the Chrysler V8s of the late 1950s, the early 1960s had a distinct advantage in extreme applications over other engines. So there's another myth too about reusing head gaskets. So 
This type of head gasket is actually intended to be reused. In the days when this type of engine was, was commonly in use, uh, 19, early overhead valve engines, it was common to pull these things apart for decarboning, for all sorts of things like that, 50, 100,000 miles. These gaskets were, are actually intended to be reusable. The, the, the crush doesn't really hurt the embossing. It's still there after it's crushed. And all you're really supposed to do is just clean these things off, give them a fresh coat of shellac or a fresh spray of copper coat, and stick them back in place. Of course, if they're damaged when you take them apart, or there's, there's obvious you know, rust or distortion to them, you throw them away. But these things can be reused. A lot of people are afraid of with mock-up. When you're mocking up an engine, and you want to torque the heads in place to make sure that all your valve train clearances are correct and so on and so forth, a lot of people are afraid to reuse this type of gasket. But as long as the thing was never, ex never uh, exposed to extended heating and cooling cycles and, and, and as long as it comes apart where this material doesn't tear, doesn't stick to the deck, these can be reused. So if you're mocking up an engine and you've got a fresh set of gaskets and you're afraid that, oh my God, I can't, I can't torque them now because then I've got to throw these gaskets away, don't stress it. They're fine. You can reuse them without any problem at all. But again, when you're dealing with this type of gasket, no sealer of any sort and no retorquing. Send it. Just send it the way it is. Uh, I, I think I covered pretty much everything I wanted to talk about with head gaskets. Uh, yeah, cat, how do they do, right? Okay, good job this time. Yeah, I can film myself. I'll see you guys tomorrow.